Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we were finally able to let our users post items to their shopping list using the form we created. In this video, we'll allow them to delete the items that they've made on the list. One thing that we need to address before we move forward is an error I made in the last video. If you notice these two parentheses on the prevent default function called in the if statement, these need to be removed. By including them, we're actually using the result of prevent default, not checking whether or not the function exists as the check for the if. This would be similar to having a function that returns true or false and then using the result of that in the if statement. However, that's not what we're intending. What we want to check is whether or not the prevent default function actually exists on the event object. This deserves a small de detour into explaining how JavaScript handles functions as data. If we have a demonstration function called demo, for example, and have it return, say, 1, by calling the function like so, we're actually using getting the return value of 1. We can see this by console logging out the result. In order to see this take place, we need to submit the form. And now we can see that one is returned. If we get rid of the two parentheses actually calling the function and just refer to the function by its name, we're testing whether or not it exists. As you can see in the script, the console log is now returning f, denoting that it's a function, and then the contents of that function, demo return one. It's this functionality that enables callbacks. Callbacks are basically passing a function into another function to be called later. You'll learn about these more as you expand your tool set as a programmer. They're not so important right now, but just keep them in the back of your head. Now that we've had that address, let's begin creating our delete functionality. The first thing that we need is a button. This is what we're going to tie our event to in order to delete these items. Inside of the button on our list item HTML, we'll add a piece of text called delete item and give it the type of button. Let's save that and refresh. Let's create a test item. As you can see now, we have a delete item button, but it doesn't do anything. Let's add that functionality now. In order to be able to address these buttons and the list items that, they, that contain them, we'll need some sort of way to identify them. As it stands currently, there's nothing really unique about them. So we'll need to add a unique piece of information to each list item and each button to address them. To do that, we'll need to make a random number. JavaScript has a built-in function called math.random. Math.random returns a floating point, pseudo-random number between 0 and 1. But we need complete integers, or whole numbers, in order to make proper HTML identifiers. To do this, we can refer back to the documentation, and they give us a handy way of getting a random integer. The function is getRandomInt with min and max. You'll need to apply a ceiling function to the min in order to round it up and a floor function to the max in order to round it down. And then we'll need to take math floor to round down the result of this mathematical equation, multiply math.random times max minus minimum, and then add back in the minimum to make it between the min and the max. So let's just copy this function. paste it into your code, and double check that everything is correct. Next, inside of this function, we'll need to create an ID and then call our getRandomInt function. Let's give it a lot wide range so we don't have any risk of running into duplicates. 10 million should do the trick. Next, when we're creating our list item HTML, 
we'll need to add the ID to the list item and the button. We'll give the list item an ID of item plus ID. Rather, we need to use our templating strings and our button an ID of button ID. We'll add the ID to the function signature and then pass the random ID that we just generated into our function. Next, we need to attach an event to the button now that we have a way to address it. We'll create a function called set delete button event. Give it the ID so we can reference the function or reference the button element rather and then say let delete button equal document dot get element by ID say button and then concatenate it with ID concatenation is just the technique of combining two strings and then on this delete button, we add an event listener, use the click event, create a function inside of here, and then simply to test, we'll create a console log. And save it. Refresh your browser. Create a test item. And press the delete button. Currently nothing happened and that's because we didn't call a function. Rather our set delete button event function. So call it, pass it the ID, save and refresh. Create another test item, press delete, and delete button works. Next, instead of calling a console log, we'll call a function that actually removes our list item. Inside of this function, we'll also need the ID so we can reference the list item. get the reference like we have done many times before. Call it by item plus ID. And next we'll need to use a function called parent node. Nodes are basically the way the JavaScript refers to functions or nodes are basically the way the JavaScript refers to HTML elements. And this is just the parent node of the element that we're referring to. So basically the top element or the unordered list. And the parent node has something a function called remove child in which we can pass in a reference to an item that's inside of it, in this case the list item, and that should delete the list item. We call that inside of the button event, save, refresh, create another test item, let's create a second test item, and we can now delete them. Just a little bit of polish that we can add here is that when we submit our form we still have the previous values we might not want that to do that we can simply use the form ref up here and call the reset function that's built in and 
And now the inputs that we put in previously are deleted and we still get our output. We're still able to delete it. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've learned a lot and I look forward to seeing the projects that you build in the future.